Okay. <laughs> I see one or two more coming in. Give it 30 more seconds. Okay. I am gonna call the meeting to order at 10.01 a.m. Could I get a roll call, please? I'll um, state the library name. If you could state your first and next last name, please. Algonquin. Uh, Sarah Murray. Carrie. Diane McNulty. Krista Lake. Krista Lake. Oh, Becky Fiala, can you not hear me? Sorry. <laughs> oh, thank you, Becky. Yeah. This Plains. Joe Bonell. Ela. Lauren Rosenthal. Evanston. Heather Norborg. Fox River Valley. Amy Dodson. Fremont. Scott Davis. Glencoe. Andy Kim. Glenview. Lindsay Dorfman. Grays Lake. Grays Lake. Highland Park. Heidi Smith. Huntley. Sorry, Frank Novak. Thank you. Indian Trails. Ryan Shepherd. Lake Forest. Lake Forest. Lake Villa. Nick Jacobson. Lincoln Wood. Colleen Malone. McHenry. Leslie Jakaki. Morton Grove. Pam Luffler. Niles Main. Niles Main. Northbrook. Kate Hall. Palatine. Jeannie Dilger. Park Ridge. Joanna Bertucci. Prospect Heights. Susie Wolf. Brown Lake. MD Donato. Warren Newport. Brian Livergood. Wilmet. Anthony Austin. Winnetka. Hey, Romy for Monica Dabrowski. Zion. Zion Benton. I'll circle back in case I missed anyone. Gray's Lake. Jim Longo. Lake. Thank you, Tim. Lake Forest. Niles, Maine. Here. Cindy, is that you? Yes. Thank yes. you. And Zion Fenton. <laughs> and for CCS, we have Rebecca Malinowski, Deborah Wishmeyer, and Beth Stoneberg. Okay. Thank you, Beth. Uh, do we have any additions to the agenda today? Hearing none, do we have any public comment? Also hearing none, let's move on to the consent agenda. Can I get a motion for approval of the consent agenda? Kate Hall, Northbrook Public Library, so move. Lauren Rose, second. I think I, Lauren beat Joe just barely, so we'll give it to Lauren this time. <laughs> okay, um, a roll call, please, for the consent agenda. Algonquin? Yes. Carrie? Yes. Crystal Lake? Yes. Chris Plains? Yes. Ela? Yes. Evanston? Yes. Fox River Valley? Yes. Fremont? Yes. Glencoe? Yes. Glenview? Yes. Grays Lake? Yes. Highland Park? Yes. Huntley? Yes. Indian Trails? Yes. Lake Forest? Lake Villa? 
Yes. Lincolnwood? Yes. McHenry? Yes. Martin Grove? Yes. Niles, Maine? Yes. Northbrook? Sorry, Beth, yes. Thank you. Palatine? Yes. <clears throat> Park Ridge? Yes. Prospect Heights? Yes. Round Lake? Yes. Warren Newport? Yes. Will Matt? Yes. Winnetka? Sorry, yes. And Zion Benton. Still absent. Okay. Consent agenda is approved. Thank you all. Moving on to business, we have a recommendation from the Budget and Finance Committee regarding the FY23-24 budget, and I'm going to turn that over to our Treasurer, Lauren Rosenthal. Um, so the Budget and Finance Committee met. Um, Rebecca went through um, the um, updates for next year. We're looking at um, keeping member fees fairly flat and uh, that's very exciting. I think that's thanks to our new additions um, that will be coming on board and um, yeah, I don't you know Rebecca are we gonna, I'm, I'm not sure what the procedure is if we need to show anything here. I mean it already went through committee went through budget and finance committee and it went through um, executive committee so, you know. Yeah, I think I just you know if we if anybody has any questions for the committee or Rebecca, now is the time. No questions. You guys did an excellent job. It was all well presented. Everything was understandable. So, um, and no one's going to complain about uh, costs going down. <laughs> so, this is an easy year. Thanks to Warren Newport. Thank you very much, Ryan. We're making our lives easier. Um, could I get a roll call vote on this? Or actually, no, we first need a motion. I move Sarah Murray from Algonquin that we recommend the FY 2023-2024 budget and total billings as presented to the governing board for approval. Second, Second from... If it's coming out of committee, it doesn't need a motion. I thought it needed a motion, but not a second. Well, then I second. Well, I mean, second. It doesn't I'll partner need a... with the committee in whichever <laughs> order you want. Okay. <laughs> Whatever. Okay. I think we are now ready for a roll call vote. <laughs> Algonquin? Yes. Carrie? Yes. Crystal Lake? Yes. Displains? Yes. Ela? Yes. Evanston? Yes. Fox River Valley? Yes. Fremont? Yes. Blanco? Yes. Sorry. Glenview? Yes. Grays Lake? Yes. Highland Park? Yes. Huntley? Yes. Indian Trails? Yes. Lake Forest? Lake Villa? Yes. Lincolnwood? Yes. McHenry? Yes. Morton Grove? Yes. Niles, Maine? Yes. Northbrook? Yes. Valentine? Yes. Park Ridge? Yes. Prospect Heights? Yes. Round Lake? Yes. Warren Newport? Yes. Wilmette? Yes. <laughs> Winnetka? Yes. And Zion Fenton. Okay, thank you. Okay, item 6B. We have a recommendation from the nominating committee regarding the FY23-24 elections. Uh, Pam Leffler is the chair of that committee. So Pam, I don't know if you want to make that motion. I can do that, and I would like to thank the nominating committee for their help with this and for the people um, who volunteered for stepping up. So the nominating committee is uh, 
recommending the following slate of candidates for next year. Uh, Joanna Bocciucci from Park Ridge as the president-elect vice president, president, past president position. Uh, Lindsay Dorfman from Glenview for secretary. Monica Jombrowski from Winnetka North Northfield as one of our member at larges and then Becky Fiolik from Crystal Lake as our second member at large. Um, okay. Can I ask, a, uh, I'm sorry, I should have thought of this sooner. Um, for our two members at large, one is gonna be a two year term and one is a one year term. Um, was that, because one is finishing Scott's term, was that discussed with, with anyone? I'm sorry, I didn't think of that sooner. That was not discussed, so. Okay. I don't know if Becky, I know Monica, is she here? Um, and then uh, I, I don't know if Becky and Monica uh, want to discuss that now. I don't think Monica's well, here, but I'm fine to do either one, whatever. I can volunteer to do the longer one since Monica's not here. I don't want to. Okay, so Becky will fill the two-year position and then Monica will um, finish out Scott's term. And thank you. And I apologize again for not thinking of that sooner. No worries. I'm impressed you said Fiolic, right? <laughs> okay, what I don't know is do we also accept nominations from the floor? And I apologize for not reviewing the bylaws on this. Uh, we can. I don't I don't think the bylaws specify either way. I just wanted to know if I'm supposed to ask that. So are there any nominations from the floor? Okay. So since this is coming out of committee, uh, Pam is making the, uh, the motion. We don't need a second. So I will again ask for a roll call vote. Start with Morton Grove. Yes. Niles Main. Yes. Northbrook. Yes. Palatine. Yes. Park Ridge. Yes. Prospect Heights? Yes. Round Lake? Yes. Warren Newport? Yes. Wilmette? Yes. Winnetka? Yes. Algonquin? Yes. Cary? Yes. Crystal Lake? Yes. Displains? Yes. Ela? Yes. Evanston? Yes. Fox River Valley? Yes. Fremont? Yes. Glencoe? Yes. Glenview? Yes. Grays Lake? Yes. Highland Park? Yes. Huntley? Yes. Indian Trails? Yes. Lake Villa? Yes. Lincolnwood? Lincolnwood, sorry. Yes. Thank you. And McHenry. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Beth, and all of you for your patience with all of these votes. Um, now uh, we can, the, the slate has passed. Um, thanks to those of you who are uh, joining us on the board next year. I appreciate everyone's uh, time and dedication to CCS. So uh, moving on to 6C, new and potential members. Um, you have information in your packet on page 17 from Rebecca about Warren Newport, Mount Prospect, and Waukegan. Does anyone have any questions that I can promptly turn over to Rebecca? Um, I'll, I can just add a quick verbal update, Jeannie. Um, okay. I have been emailing uh, early this week with Tiffany at Waukegan Public Library, um, and they, at this point, are still interested in moving forward with CCS membership after hearing kind of the initial spiel. Um, their goal at this time is to essentially join in with the Mount Prospect project. Um, so again, none of that's final, but that's kind of where we're at with, um, with them. Uh, one thing we did talk about with the budget and finance committee that you would have seen in the um, list for potential uses of the development fund 
um, I don't think will be an issue, but is offsetting OCLC costs um, for bringing in new members. Because as you know, we redistribute those costs. Waukegan is not currently an OCLC member. So them coming on, like them joining CCS right now, all CCS members are also OCLC members. So we'd be, you know, adding their, um, their fee to our group purchase. Um, the initial quote I got from OCLC was, I think, out of line with what Waukegan should pay, but not wildly so. Um, and Mount Prospect is kind of in the opposite boat. They are, you know, per CCS standards underpaying. So these two libraries joining together would kind of even out. So there wouldn't be a huge bump up or down um, if they both joined at the same time. So theoretically, this is going to work out great. Um, but Waukegan is kind of do some internal work until May 1st, and then I'll hear back from them. And hopefully we'll be moving forward with an application um, striving for governing board approval in November. Hey, Rebecca, can I ask a, a couple of questions? Yep. Uh, I, I'm very excited about the prospect of, of Waukegan joining uh, CCS, obviously is our neighbor, and we have a lot of patrons that use each other's libraries. Um, and I talked to Tiffany about this in the past, and I know that I, I offer to you know, go to our board meeting if, if you know, to talk about, you know, not that we've, I mean, we've joined, but not gone live to, to help advocate for it. Um, do you, what, I, and I should know this, and I apologize, but what's the timeline then for Mount Prospect and potentially Waukegan to go, go live with CCS? And then what, how, do you know any of the insight into what their board is talking? If, are they motivated to do it, or is it going to be a, a battle to convince them? Um, the timeline for Mount Prospect, so uh, the board, you all have approved their membership. Um, we'll start work um, late this calendar year. So we'll do some initial planning type stuff starting in November, but the project will really kick off in earnest like January, February of 2024 with a go live um, in October of 2024. So similar timeline to Warren Newport, but a year later. Um, as far as the Waukegan board, um, I don't know, um, is the short answer. I don't know if Tiffany's discussed it at length with the board yet. I have also, of course, made myself available um, for any additional information or presentation or anything I can do to help. So thank you, Ryan, for already volunteering to help. I appreciate that. Yeah, sure. And if that's something that you're going to go and you want to do in tandem, I'm, I'm, I'm not necessarily the best representative, but, I, but I'm really motivated to, just to talk about our perspective, how that would benefit their patrons and our patrons is just it's such a win-win and it would be really huge yeah. for selfishly for for us and the and the uh patrons we serve so thanks yeah and Other if i'm i'm sorry Go can ahead, i just Kate. add one thing to what ryan was saying and rebecca i if i'm not mistaken um Sue Rinder has put together like an absolutely gorgeous packet of information that it feels like it would be a waste to only use it once. Um, and seems like that would be a good thing for Tiffany if she doesn't already have to have. I bet Rebecca's already given it to her though, and that this was a pointless thing for me to say. So um, she does already have it. Um, I don't remember if I gave it to her or if Ryan or someone else gave it to her, but she has it. Uh, so it is a beautiful packet. Uh, I believe Sue also gave it to Rails um, for them to kind of use and adapt as a template for other libraries considering consortium membership, CCS or otherwise. That's great. Anybody else? Okay, all that sounds great. Super excited. Can't wait to get Warren Newport on board and then move into the next ones. Um, you also have in your packet on pages 17 and 18 an office move project update. Um, Beth, do you have anything uh, fresh and recent you'd like to add to that? Um, no, we did reach out to the building just to ask if they're able to confirm yet a move in date, um, which they're not, but we are on track to still target the early to mid June at the very latest. So um, thank you to all the libraries who suddenly want furniture. I appreciate that. And um, I think I think we're we're in a good place right now. So thank you. Any questions though about the project? 
I have one. I noticed that you said that the rent was going to be a lot cheaper. What? Why is that? Um, I can take um, that. So oh, uh, okay. we're we're downsizing space significantly. Um, so we currently have forty five hundred square feet, and we'll be downsizing to about 2,200, 2,300 square feet. Um, additionally. Um, will be a much smaller tenant in a much larger space. So right now at our current building, we are the largest tenant. So whenever there's like repair work or anything like that, we pay the largest share of that. So we will, um, our operating costs, even though we're getting sort of like better amenities in the new space will be less because we're sm such a small fish in their big corporate pond. Thanks. And if I'm not mistaken, are we getting some months free in the upcoming fiscal year? So next year's rent will be particularly low and then it yep. will go back up some. Yeah, so next year's rent will be, um, I think it's like $35,000 because we'll have a couple months of this building's rent and then a few months of the new building's rent, but we'll have, we have nine months of rent abatement. Um, and then the following year, um, our like full year rent will be about like 70,000, a little bit under, um, as opposed to right now it's 120 something. That was a good question, Joe. Others? Yay, congratulations on the negotiators. Yeah. Yes, yeah, definitely. Beth, Beth found us an awesome spot. So thank you to Beth and our real estate mogul, uh, Jonathan at Cushman Wakefield. Other questions about the move? When do we get to see it? Uh, governing board will be in person in August per the new approved governing board schedule. So we will invite everyone to the space in August. Um, well, ever, like, I mean, you can bring your whole staff if you want, but we will definitely be hosting governing board and Beth is working on some other ideas to welcome folks into the space. Um, the technical groups have all had the opportunity to vote on whether they want to keep in-person meetings or virtual meetings. There is a lot of benefit and we've seen good attendance with the virtual meetings. Um, so it varies a little bit group to group. Um, Deborah, nobody has voted to go 100% in-person, is that correct? Uh, that's correct. I think the only group that will remain fully virtual is the IT group and then all of the other technical groups will have at least one to two meetings um, in person at the new office. Okay. Anything else about the move? Okay, thanks again to Rebecca and particularly Beth for all the work on that. Um, okay, we will move on to e-commerce updates. Rebecca, I know there was one particular thing that you wanted to highlight for everyone. Yes, um, we've gotten a couple questions about PCI compliance. Um, so your if you are now enrolled in ePay, your library's primary contact should have received um, two emails from Secure Trust um, about logging in to begin the PCI compliance process. Um, so I know that was an issue with um, TSIS, like 28 libraries didn't get emails about PCI compliance. So. Um, if you haven't received something, um, check with your library's other contact, like our emails went to Beth. Um, and then if you still don't have anything, follow up with Megan at the state treasurer's office. Um, she did say there was a problem with the automated um, delivery of those emails and that her manager was manually resending them, but um, they should have all gone out about two weeks ago. So if you haven't seen them and you're enrolled in ePay, follow up on that. Um, this is the first year that CCS has to do PCS, PCI compliance um, as an organization because this is the first year we're collecting credit card, pay like CCS is collecting credit card payments. Um, so Marcin and I are currently working on that. And then um, as I noted in the packet, we've also gotten questions Libraries who move to ePay or another solution, you don't have to cancel Comprise. That's just going to expire on its own. Um, but you will have to cancel your current processor. For almost all of you, that's going to be TSIS. So um, you should be able to cancel by phone. I know Lauren had some issues at ELA based on how the account was set up in a previous director's name. So it may not be 
100% easy peasy, but it should just be um, a phone call, hopefully. Yeah, I, I will share. It, it was really easy to just cancel on the phone. It did not require anything because we had our first full month with no TSIS charges. Um, but, uh, and I'm not sure if they're all set up this way, but the account owner, or rather the business owner was our previous director, what, uh, Matt Woman. So that was that was a bit of a stumbling block, right? Because he's been gone for a long time. But um, other than that, like as long as you're the original person, it's no problem canceling. And if you're not, then you can just, you'll find a workaround to take care of that. But phone was no problem. They actually made us submit in writing and they wouldn't take my signature on it. They required us to have a signature from the city because the city set it up originally. So we had to have the finance manager at the city submit in writing that we were gonna leave TSIS. So just as a heads up, we had to do a little more than a phone call. I had to do a lot more than a phone call because it kept saying Lauren Rosenthal. So <laughs> it took I'm sure months. she would have signed something for you. <laughs> sure, but it did take a long time but we finally got it straightened out. So this just encapsulates everyone's problems with thesis, right? The lack of consistency, just one of the many, many items on the list. So happy to cancel that. Anything else about e-commerce? Okay, let's move on to innovative updates. Um, Deborah, do you have anything to add to what's in the packet? I do. So our main um, update on innovative things is that our big, scary production server migration completed over the weekend. Um, so just a quick summary, because this happened after January governing board. Um, as part of the project, Innovative moved our Polaris servers from our current or old space on Amazon Web Services over to new servers in their Clarivate environment. So it was a surprise project uh, that Innovative kindly gifted us with in February, but I am happy to report that it, it honestly went better than we had hoped, though not 100% perfect or without any issues. Um, at this point, most major connectivity issues that were reported on Monday have been resolved. The biggest of those issues were API connected tools not working or connecting properly. The training database was down. Um, and various vendors hadn't updated SIP connections prior to libraries opening on Monday. However, the bulk of those issues are now resolved. We're still working with libraries um, on a few like one-off problems, um, like labels and other things not printing correctly, some staff client connectivity issues and so on. So we'll share out a roundup of any remaining outstanding issues in Friday's newsletter. Um, a big thank you to all of your teams at your library for kind of wading through all of the communications that we sent out, for contacting all of your vendors about the change, and then of course, updating all of the settings and config at your library. So a special shout out to your IT teams because I knew that I know that they took on um, a bulk of all of that work. So again, it is over. We are still wrapping up some final issues. Um, Rekha, anything you want to add to that before we maybe open it up to questions? No, thank you. That was a good summary. <laughs> um, yeah, so any questions or comments on that or any of the other innovative updates in the packet? Uh, Deborah, I'll just say that um, I know on our end, like, because we outsource our IT and my assistant director who supervises it has been out. Um, and so the communication from CCS was amazing and wonderful because I was like, had to get involved on and, but I didn't have to worry because you guys had already done everything. So as always, like the communication piece is so critical and you guys uh, just do a great job of making sure everyone knows what's going on. And um, I don't think you can ever update too much, but you guys update like it's always fantastic. We always know what's going on. So thank you. Thank you, Kate. Appreciate that. Yes, thank you, Kate, for saying what I was going to say if no one else did. And I'm, as I'm sure from the nods, uh, other people agreed. So you guys always do a great job with that. Any update on the performance issues that you want to give, Deborah? how those, that conversation is going with Innovative? 
Well, I will say we have been very fortunate in that we have not had um, many performance issues over the last month. So um, we did have one Wednesday, it feels like a lifetime ago, but I think it was only like two weeks ago where we had um, sort of a stuck mark job on a Wednesday that was unrelated though to the prior issues we had um, been seeing. So, so far, so good. Things have been going very smoothly. Um, if we do have any issues moving forward, Innovative is prepped to pull in um, individuals from their development team to hop onto our servers um, to take a sort of a deep dive into what's happening. But as Rebecca noted in, in the packet, there haven't been too many opportunities for them to do that deep dive. Fortunately, um, over the last few weeks, they've taken it easy on us maybe. They knew we had this production server migration um, to take care of. So we've gotten a break in, an, in the other areas. So I don't have an update, just that again, if we do have issues, um, both support engineers and development staff are poised to hop on and take a look. Yeah, and I'll just add CCS is meeting with um, support weekly until we're satisfied that this is totally resolved. Um, so I did, um, in anticipation of just this question, uh, speaking with the support manager last week, I was like, I mean, we haven't had any issues. Is it fixed or we're just lucky? And so they have been sort of um, taking this like piecemeal approach, like, oh, now this job is involved. Now this job is involved. Now this job is involved and adding those jobs to the script that they're running. So it is possible they've just gotten all the problem pieces like corralled into this new script they're running and we won't see any further issues, but um, we're not ready to like call it resolved and cancel those meetings yet because as soon as we do, <laughs> we know we'll have another issue. So they are still monitoring. We're still tracking them, um, but it's possible that these like piecemeal kind of steps that they've taken have added up to the full solution. We just have to wait and see. And I think they were also hoping that the migration to the new server helped, you know, um, they're able on the new servers because they're like in the Clarivate environment versus Amazon um, web services that they can boost resources much faster. Um, and has maybe a little bit better access. So fingers crossed that we'll see a um, few issues moving forward, but we're ready to tackle them if they come up. Okay, great. Thank you, Deborah. Uh, so now we move on to reports from officers. Um, I do not have a president's report. Diane, anything a secondary? Nope. Yep, no okay. report. No report. Great. Always good. Uh, Lauren, in addition to the budget, anything else to report from the treasurer? No report. No report. Great. Okay. Uh, committees and groups. You have the pages in your packet, pages 25 to 36 with those committee reports. Does anyone have any questions for Deborah on any of those? Okay, hearing none, we will move on to the executive director's report, which starts on page 14. Rebecca, is there anything you wanted to highlight that we haven't already discussed? Um, yeah, I do just want to point out on page 20, um, kind of just like tucked it in there. Um, Rachel, Rachel Fisher, our member services librarian for technical services, who started two months before the pandemic started, so a lot of you haven't met her yet. Um, she has been working on um, a couple of projects that are intertwined, this technical services workflow analysis and OCLC alternatives investigation. Um, you know, it's possible that we could move to another platform outside of OCLC and have some savings. Um, but it's also possible a move like that would require compromises in terms of functionality or workflow. So Rachel is doing a pretty deep dive into this and working um, on a couple of reports um, that we'll review internally and then um, see like, okay, should we take this up the chain to have you know, a more robust discussion? Um, so this has included um, meeting with OCLC uh, to talk about pricing because one option is like we leave 
um, OCLC as our source of records and move to something like Sky River and BNT Cat. And then we'd have to go outside of the statewide group services contract if we wanted to maintain um, world share um, interlibrary loan functionality. So we've been meeting with them about pricing. And as part of that, um, we have requested that they do a full pricing review of CCS members. Um, be just because uh, we we asked for a quote outside of group services contract and they essentially gave us the same pricing for all of our individual libraries just like bumped up without the group services discount um so we've said you know like that's not reflective of our current usage we should be getting we lend twice as much as we borrow as a group through oclc so that should be reflected in our pricing um and it's not so anyway we are chasing down a lot of different like OCLC paths here. Um, and it may result in nothing. We may just say, you know, our it's expensive, but it's our best option and we're going to keep on keeping on. Or we may say, hey, we want to do um, like a significant project here or pilot an alternative. So watch for that report um, in the future. Um, OCLC, a big mysterious mystery. Any questions for Deborah about that? Can I ask a question, please? Sure. Um, so the um, the mention here of upcoming changes to LEAP. Um, so what is the problem? Is the is pricing the problem that you're trying to investigate and solve, or or is it some other? function that's going to be happening in LEAP, I guess I'm a little Oh, um, so there's two different things, essentially. So like OCLC pricing, like OCLC is expensive, right? It's every, like, we're getting close to half a million dollars of OCLC money every year. Um, so that is one issue. And then not an issue, but an opportunity is that as more technical services functions are added to LEAP, it opens up some, some potential new workflow avenues. Um, so Rachel is looking into those, but it's not anything that we're like, um, the new integration that's mentioned in here with Baker and Taylor, um, it is a very streamlined EDI workflow if it works for our libraries, but if it doesn't, we still have the same existing functionality in the staff client, and we wouldn't recommend, you know, making a change just for that. Okay, thank you. Other questions? Maybe not just about that, but anything else in Rebecca's report? Jeannie, hey. I have a question. Um, on the last couple pages with the beautiful stats, um, I, I don't know, maybe this is more of a Deborah than Rebecca. I don't know who did them. Um, with the courses, I'm presuming that those are cumulative, but I wanted to check. Or are those just since the last governing board meeting? Oh, uh, these, the uh, member services training statistics page, I did need to mention that. So thank you for bringing that up. Oh, you're welcome. Um, it's gorgeous. Yeah, Mieko put it together because oh, Mieko. Kudos to Mieko. Yeah, I, I was like, it just appeared in my inbox, like, hey, look what Mieko did. And it's gorgeous. Um, so it is looking at um, the fourth quarter of the calendar year 2022. So it is three okay. months of stats. Um, and I, I can, Deborah may have some more insight into Mieko's work on this. I just, I thought it was interesting and that you may, like, we can ask Mieko to continue working on this or if this was just part of her analysis. I just thought it was great. And I was like, hey guys, check out what's going mm -hmm. on. Check out what Mieko's up to. Yeah, I'm so happy that my library was one of the top users because that means that the new staff training stuff we put in place is working. So, yay. Yeah, and I think it's really interesting. Um, you can see in that last page that we have a lot of users in Ohio. Um, <laughs> and that is because our online courses have been widely shared at um, innovative and Polaris conferences among users. And 
lots of staff at other libraries find them really helpful and wonderful and they you know take advantage and we're happy to share them too so i do like to see that you know they're getting lots of hits from what i believe is clc um that consortia out in ohio so thanks to wes if you're watching this for <laughs> promoting our online courses that really says a lot about the courses that's really amazing it does and and please uh pass on my compliments to mieko this was um i feel like and Kay Emery would give this five stars. It's really beautiful. Agreed. Anything else? Okay. Hearing nothing, I am surprised to say, and pleased to say that brings us to adjournment. And I don't remember if we do a motion and second for adjournment or if this is an organization that believes that the chair can make the motion. That's I see you, Kate Jeannie. nodding. Jeannie can adjourn. <laughs> so therefore, I will adjourn the meeting at 1041 a.m. Thank you all for your time this morning. Does anyone have